All right, chemistry, uh, this is your video lecture for chapter 8, section 3. We're talking about the activity series of the elements. Things I'm wanting you to be able to do at the end of this section, I want you to be able to explain the significance of the activity series. I want you to be able to use an activity series to predict whether a given reaction will occur and what the products will be. So the ability of an element to react the ability of an element to react is referred to as the element's activity. The more readily an element reacts with other substances, the greater its activity is. An activity series is a list of elements organized according to the ease with which the elements undergo certain chemical reactions. For metals, greater activity means a greater ease of loss of electrons to form positive ions, as we've already learned about. But for nonmetals, it's the opposite. Greater activity means a greater ease of gaining electrons to form negative ions. Because remember, when either of these types of elements, either of these types of atoms ionize, they do so with the goal of obtaining an uh, a noble gas electron configuration. So metals on the left side of the periodic table, it is easier for them to gain electrons, sorry, to lose electrons to achieve that with nonmetals over on the right side of the periodic table it's easier for them to gain electrons in order to do that so remember what the goal is in order to remember that tendency the order in which elements are listed is usually determined by single displacement reactions and the most active element in the activity series is placed at the top of the series and so when an element is at the top of the list it can replace each of the elements below it from a compound in a single displacement reaction. Activity series can uh, be used to help predict whether chemical reactions will occur. And note, there is no specific trend for you to memorize with regard to uh, the activity series of the elements. You will be given a list. You'll be given the actual list in order to uh, answer questions about uh, the activity of elements. There is essentially, for our purposes, nothing to memorize. There are some loose trends, some general trends, but they're not hard and fast, and they're certainly not easy to memorize, so we will not do that in this particular course. Let's like, uh, take a look at the activity series of elements. What I want to start with is the activity of metals on the right there. The reason I want to start there is because that's what you will see most of the time doing activity series uh, problem solving. You'll be looking mostly at metals. Now, the general very broad trend is that you'll see the uh, main group of metals up there at the top being the most active. And as you go down, you start to move into the transition metals. And at the very bottom, you have transition metals that are very heavy, meaning they're towards the bottom of the periodic table. I also want to point out that to the right of those metals, there is the situation in which they will undergo that reaction. For example, lithium, rubidium, potassium, calcium, barium, strontium, calcium, and sodium are all very active metals. And because they're so active, they can react with cold water and acids, replacing uh, hydrogen, and react with oxygen, forming oxides. And what I want to point out is that of all the things listed right there, the reacting with cold water is the situation in which there's the least amount of kinetic energy, meaning out of all the things listed, cold water is the most difficult thing to react with. So it's going to take a very reactive element to react with that low kinetic energy species. But notice as you go down uh, into the portion with magnesium, aluminum, manganese, even down to cobalt, nickel, tin, into hydrogen, antimony, bismuth, on and on and on, you'll notice that the species become more and more uh, energetic in terms of their kinetics. For example, in the second block, magnesium and aluminum, they'll react with steam, but not cold water. Remember, steam is simply water in the gaseous phase. And so it's the same molecule, it's just in a much higher energy state. Remember that reacting with cold water, that was not only in the liquid state, it actually had to be very cold water. But now with magnesium and aluminum, in order for those elements to react, we need more kinetic energy. We need something like steam, something that's going to heat it up. And on and on and on. 
Uh, a lot of students uh, wonder if only metals can be involved in these single displacement reactions. No, halogens, non-metals, they can undergo, uh, they can be the focus of these single displacement reactions as well. And I want to point out that the activity series exists for both metals, okay, positive cations and um, anions, right, the right side of the periodic table. And so I have there on the left the activity of the halogens. So for the halogens, if th uh, those are involved in a single displacement reaction, uh, fluorine will displace chlorine, and chlorine will displace uh, bromine, and bromine will displace uh, iodine, and on and on and on. Um, the activity series as it exists is actually much larger than we have presented here. It's simply we're not going to do something uh, of that breadth. An activity series is a categorization of elements based on their reactivity. For example, alkali and heavier alkaline earth metals react readily with cold water, oxygen, and acids. Lighter alkaline earth metals, aluminum, and some transition metals will not react with cold water but will still react readily with steam, oxygen, and acids. Some heavier metals will react with acids and oxygen but are unreactive to any sort of water. Other heavier metals will react with oxygen, but are inert to acids and water. A few transition metals, such as gold and silver, are very unreactive. Uh, moving on, let's see how we're doing here. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Uh, after which, I would like you to pause the video and see if you can flip back to the slide that has the activity series printed on it and use it to anticipate the following situation. So we have some chromium and liquid water. Please press pause and anticipate whether or not this reaction will occur using your activity series. Turns out this reaction will not occur because according to your activity series, chromium will not react with liquid water. Notice the state of phase is listed right after that water, but it, uh, because it has to act with steam, it needs that high energy situation. Let's try another one. Go ahead and press pause and uh, predict whether or not this reaction will occur. All right, turns out this reaction will not occur. Platinum does not form oxides directly. It will not react with oxygen to make an oxide. You need to form an oxide indirectly, meaning reacting with something besides pure oxygen. We've got another one. We have cadmium. Uh, will it react with hydrobromic acid? Note that HBr is an acid, so as you use your activity series, keep that in mind. Please press pause now. Turns out this reaction can occur. Cadmium does react with acids to form hydrogen. And so because we know that the cadmium is going to react with the acid to form hydrogen, we know that hydrogen is going to be one of the products. Remember, according to Brinkelhoff, hydrogen is one of the diatomic molecules, so it needs to be H2. And so the cadmium is going to replace the hydrogen and then bond with the bromine. One more. Please press pause. Turns out this reaction can occur. Magnesium will react with steam to form hydrogen. We have magnesium reacting with gaseous water. I see that G down that state of phase. That means that is steam, a high kinetic energy situation. Uh, and under those conditions, magnesium can displace hydrogen. Again, forming hydrogen. According to Brinkelhoff, hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, so it needs to be represented as H2 in the product. Once you remove one hydrogen, you have an OH left, right? a hydroxide. And in order to uh, make a legitimate species, you have to have two hydroxides for every magnesium ion. Moving on. I would like you to try to identify the element that replaces hydrogen from acids. 
but not replace tin from its compounds. So go into your activity series, try to identify some element that will replace hydrogen in acids, but doesn't replace tin. Please press pause now. The culprit turns out to be lead. We see that on the activity series, lead will replace hydrogen from acids, but is listed below tin, meaning that uh, lead will not replace tin. Remember, uh, the location on the activity series speaks directly to its relative activity. So the fact that tin is listed before lead means that lead will not replace tin. It's in fact, it's tin that would replace lead. Let's try another one. According to the uh, table provided on slide five, what is the most active transition metal? Please press pause and generate an answer now. You should have flipped back to slide five, looked at that activity series, and seen that as you go down the activity series of metals, manganese is the first transition metal in the list. So because it's the first transition metal that you come to, that means it's the most reactive transition metal. Now, one more set of problems here. These are for your benefit to check your work. Use the activity series to determine if the following reactions will occur. So we see that antimony will not react with hydrochloric acid, will not react with acids, it needs to react with uh, oxides. We have uh, potassium and zinc chloride. Turns out that potassium is more active than zinc, therefore it will replace zinc. See that with uh, HF and Cl2, we have no reaction occurring because chlorine is less active than fluorine. Remember that fluorine is listed first on the activity series of halogens. We have water and sodium, and in fact, sodium will displace hydrogen in water to create an oxide, sodium oxide and hydrogen gas. And lastly, uh, we see that um, chlorine will displace bromine because on the activity series of halogens, chlorine is more active than bromine. Alright, thank you for watching the video. Uh, please bring any questions you have to class, and I will see you next period.